I wanted to get your reaction to January 6th. We haven't had you on the show since then and just the lack of security. We know that NYPD and the FBI had tipped off Capitol Police of what could have possibly happened on that day. And we saw some of the videos. Obviously, people pushed through uh, the police who were there. Um, the crimes were committed, obviously. So um, what is your, what are your thoughts on what happened? Well, listen, I, I think, uh, you know, nobody wants to speculate. And there's been a lot of speculation, um, given the various videos, uh, given some of the reporting. Um, what I can tell you is that the NYPD, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies uh, notified the Capitol Police, notified Secret Service and and the um, and the Washington, D.C. police about different chattering that they heard, uh, different intelligence that they received. I think there could have been much better security. I think the investigation that goes into this um, will result in determining who's really responsible for the downplay of security in there. And it was definitely downplayed. Um, and, and there's also other things that I think have to be looked at. I've seen four different entrance ways uh, into the Capitol where the Capitol Police actually opened up the barricades and let people in, waved them in. It's hard to say somebody breached security or somebody broke into the Capitol when you have actual videos of the police letting them in. Um, I will say that the things that happened in the Capitol, um, the breaching of certain offices, the breaching of um, certain hallways, uh, the theft um, or attempted theft of anything in the building, it's outrageous. Shouldn't have happened. Um, and the people that did this should be held accountable. Totally. Yeah. If you committed a crime, you should be held accountable. Um, that being said, the, the whole second round of impeachment against President Trump, they were saying that he incited violence, that, uh, you know, whatever he said before the uh, riots and the storming of the Capitol took place, it was his fault. But uh, I listened to a whole speech. He said, peacefully and patriotically march to the Capitol to have your voices heard. He didn't say commit a crime. And uh, right. so uh, did you interpret any sort of um, him inciting violence in his speech? No, I think there's two things behind the impeachment uh, claim. First of all, that he incited, that's false, did not happen. It's plain, it's clear, it just did not happen. The second element of the claim is that he incited based on a false narrative that there was a theft of the election or there was voter fraud and election fraud. And I think if I was the president um, and I was going to pursue this at trial, um, I would put up the election fraud because I can tell you in six different states, maybe seven, but at least six different states, there are legislators in those states that are absolutely, absolutely convinced there was fraud, voter fraud, election fraud. And I know that because we had 140 House members and eight U.S. senators that proclaimed it, um, you know, during the certification of the votes. So don't say it didn't happen. You may not agree with us, uh, with me, especially somebody like me that went through the evidence, saw thousands, tens of thousands of, uh, of sworn affidavits, sworn to the point uh, on the penalty of perjury um, that these things did happen. So, you know, I, let the investigation take its course. But the two elements of the impeachment, I don't see how the House uh, and the Senate convicts him. Yeah. And you're right. There's still a lot of questions that haven't been answered in regard to uh, what happened on Election Day. And we uh, are told over and over again, oh, there's no there was no election voter fraud. Uh, don't worry about it. Time to turn the page. Time to unite. Uh, but, yeah, we, we still need to get to the bottom of exactly what happened because there was, what, like dozens of people who signed affidavits and we saw the anomalies that happened. And there was voter fraud. We know that for a fact. Again, the question was how much did it change the election? And so, again, that still has not been answered. And the, the idea that people want to just, like, move on and turn the page – that's silly. Like, we got to get to the bottom of it. So I, I want to fast forward to uh, Inauguration Day and the security that was there. And obviously things went peacefully, and that's great. But um, things weren't peaceful everywhere. And I'm sure you saw this where Antifa, the leftists in Seattle and Portland were, like, destroying the city again. In fact, they actually attacked the Democratic headquarters in Portland. So I thought this was all going to end. And then no one seems to care about that. Is that not an insurrection? And uh, like the media, 
You check their websites, hardly any discussion about it, but you'll see the clips on social media, pretty violent, more crimes committed, and it's ignored. Well, listen, this is nothing new. I mean, it's been ignored for the last six months, right? In Portland, Seattle, especially Portland, where they attacked a federal courthouse consistently, nightly, every day for almost three months. They attacked a federal courthouse. They attacked DHS agents. They attacked U.S. Marshals. And um, my question is, where was the FBI um, at that point in time? How many arrests did the FBI make um, with regard to that activity and the engagement of criminal conduct against the courthouse, against the federal agents? Um, it, there's a big hypocrisy here on how the FBI is handling what happened at the Capitol and what happened in Portland and some of these other cities on a daily basis for months. So, um, it, you know, if you if, listen, if you engage in criminal conduct, I don't care who it's against. You have to be held accountable. And I just don't see that happening. Yeah, total hypocrisy. And it's infuriating because uh, these type of situations should be handled equally. And we don't see that. And you, you if you think back of over like two dozen minorities were killed during these Black Lives Matter and Antifa riots and the billions of dollars in destruction in the cities. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, it's uh, they're fighting for social justice. That has nothing to do with social justice. It's it's just creating chaos and division in this country. Now, I wanted to ask you really quickly, with the Democrats in control now and Biden being sworn in, are you concerned about the future of law enforcement in our country and even just like our military as well? Because we've seen this effort from Democrats uh, over the past months, over the past years, where they want to defund police. We know what happens with that. And also back to the Obama administration, where they continued to gut our military. It was the Trump administration that built it up and gave the military the resources it needs to protect our country. Well, listen, um, uh, President Biden just, uh, you know, I think today or yesterday, uh, got his secretary of defense confirmed uh, by the Senate. And I would hope that the secretary uh, continues along the lines that President Trump had really rebuilt the military, uh, was taking care of the veterans. Uh, I hope he would continue down that path because it's the right path, not only for the country, but for the veterans as well and the people that are in our military. As far as defunding the police and what's going on around the country, you have the major surges in violent crime in New York City and other cities around the country, the Los Angeles, you know, New York City, a 240 percent increase, I think, in shootings, uh, 200 percent increase in, uh, in shootings or homicide in L.A. Um, this stuff is going on all over the country. And these major surges of violent crime, shootings and homicide are happening in cities that are run by Democrats. At some point in time, they have to take a step back, do what Rudy Giuliani did in 1994 and realize that nobody wants to live, visit, work or go to school in a place where they're not safe. And the only way to make your city flourish, bring back economic development, bring back real estate value, bring back tourism is to make sure that crime drops at the most it can. And uh, they're just not doing that. Hopefully, they come to a realization that's the only thing that's going to work, and they take an aggressive effort on uh, really addressing crime reduction. Yeah, and you're so right. No one wants to live in a community that isn't safe. People want to feel safe in their homes and in their areas, in their cities. And uh, so do these members of Congress, the same ones that want to defund police, the same ones that uh, are say very not nice things about our military. They all want security at the Capitol. They want to feel safe at work, too. Well, anyways, we're out of time. Thank you so much.